You a vlogger, facing over You a queen when I less than I'm a goose Oh wami, oh wami Oh wami, oh wami Oh wami, oh wami Oh wami, oh wami Such a powerful woman. Hi ninjas, how are you doing? It's your girl Oaminich oh, Wajauru and welcome back to my channel. If it's the first time joining me, you must definitely welcome. Please do make sure that I subscribe and obviously hit the bell. I absolutely love you. Now, if you've not watched part one and part two, I would advise that you do because this is a continuation of part two, which is part three. Now, obviously, um, as I'm saying, it's a continuation. So if you just start the story here, it will definitely not make sense. So please go start part one and then obviously then come watch this. I will try. I think I'll put in a playlist so that it will be easier for you guys. So um, part three, this is when my Lobola is about to get paid. Um, this is fast forward to 2018. We had not been in contact with my father since 2014 at this point. Um, so, you know, obviously, it was a very sad situation because, remember, we did not have a mom um, and we now had no one um, except for my mother's side of the family. Um, I, I remember because that time, you know, we had gone through so much, like from 2014 to 2018, there was so much that had happened. Um, I just remember, you know, just hearing, oh, your father bought a new car. Oh, your father bought a new car. Oh, your father bought a new car. I don't know how many cars he bought, but it was a lot. Um, meanwhile, his kids did not literally have basic needs, you know, basic needs he, they did not have. Um, my aunt literally is a saint and my aunt does not want me to talk about any of this. She literally wants peace. She does not even want us to take my father to court, nothing. But I'm tired. I'm literally tired, you know. So basically, um, she really did everything that she could. She really did her best. And for that, I will forever love and be very much grateful to her. If not for her... Um, I really don't know what would have become of us because at that point we were homeless. We had to be taken in, um, you know, and she did, you know, and she never abused us a single day. You know, even me, when I was with my ex, there were times that she would say, you know, you can come home so that you can go back to school. I know you're smart, my child, you'll do it. But I remember just thinking I'll become an even bigger burden because she already has two two daughters that she took in and a child because Ray was still very young. At that time, the only thing that we could be able to do was that sometimes we'll be able to send money, but my ex really did try and he wasn't like getting paid a lot, you know? So basically, fast forward to 2018, my ex um, was actually saying that, hey, I want to go pay Lobola. Now, first of all, let me tell you guys something. I did not want my Lobola to get paid. I did not want. Looking at every, <coughs> everything that had happened, I remember just telling my ex, listen, we can use this money to help the kids. We can use this money to do something. Because I just felt my father did not deserve my Lobola money. For what? Why should he get that money? Literally, like at that point, even till today, I don't even have a single sock that I can point and say this was from my father. He had not helped in any way. Every day he stopped Mus when my mother was still alive. Remember that 2009 that I told you on part one that I got kicked out of the house? And he kicked me out not having bought me winter clothes even. That was it. I, till today, I have never even seen one rent from my father. And not only just for me, I've had to be taken from my pot to feed his kids for years. So basically, um, you know, well, not to feed, because my aunt was doing that. Like, but wherever we could help, we could help. But we also didn't have money, you know. But basically, I was explaining to my ex, listen, I don't see a need. I don't see a reason. But he explained to me to say that, yeah, now he felt that 
Um, he basically just wanted to be my husband. He wanted to do things the right way, this and that. And he literally got me to a point of convincing me to say you should do it. I did not even know where to start, but I do remember that we went to the uncles who were unfortunately both passed. And they were the ones that actually contacted one of the family members and said that, you know what, Bagashongwani, they want to come, you know. And guess what the answer was? Yes, they can come. And mind you guys, as I'm saying, since 2014 up until 2018, we had never spoken. The only time, the first time that I went back home was in June, I think, of 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and when I got home, there was a family meeting. And in the family meeting, I remember him saying, but I never kicked you out. Did I kick you out? And I had to say no. And I had to get on my knees. They told me, you need to get on your knees and you need to apologize to your father. I couldn't even ask, apologize for what? Why? Because of guys, peace, Kaloku. We want peace. When you do not have the other parent and the other one is the one that is here, you would do every single thing to try keep this relationship. And let me tell you guys something. Like, we were not getting anyone that was coming towards us it was always us having to reach to this side it was us always having to be hurt and you know put take in whatever happened and all the things he would do they were swept under the rug nobody ever held my father accountable and that's why like he loves his brother so much personally i really truly do believe if my my, my younger sisters never ever called me out on anything that is wrong ah. Uh, like, you know, and they do. But in his case, if maybe his brothers do, they just do it somewhere where I've never seen and the results have just never been seen. But nobody, like, really, like, you know, he's, he's like, the head of the family, right? So he's never called out on anything. So that's why, like, even then, um, I had to go on my knees, honey. And I had to apologize so that he could get that point for Lobola. Okay. So basically after that, because I had to go home first before they could come. Because remember, we have, to, uh, we, from all those years, he doesn't even know my face. <laughs> so it will be somehow that I arrive with my in-laws at the same time. So I had to catch a taxi first, get home, get that meeting. I apologize, blah, blah, blah. And at this time, it seems like there's peace because remember, money is coming. So now they have to now discuss. Okay, Owami is back, but then what about the sisters? So the sisters now also, okay, they can come because why? Ching Ching is coming. Okay. Um, my ex, you know, comes. That was in June. So that obviously they could hear like how much the amount would be. They came in. They were told how much the lobola was going to be. We went back home. But when we went back home, my sisters were now left um, back over, um, over there. Now, before then, um, they said that because my ex had stayed with me for years before he came and to marry me, he has to, I don't know if it's to Shaula or, he, but he has, he, it's like a fine that he has to pay before the Lobola. And I remember he said, not a small amount, honey, that was only just a fine. And he said that we're not going to talk about anything, Lobola, up until that whole fine is 100% paid. So they had to pay that money or he had to pay that money in cash same day. Well, not in cash, I think they did transfer something, but same same day, because they could not go back to Free State not knowing how much the Lobola was going to be. Because, guys, to go to Venda in Free State with that car, so it was about 5,000 rands. Because Free State is far. And then including the, 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 the what do they call this? The toll gates. It was 5,000 or 10. I don't know if it was, it was like, I think maybe five. Because we were driving a Peugeot, so it's not as heavy on fuel, you know, like my car now. Uh, but I remember it was 5K or more than that. So we were like, well, that would be a lot of money, you know, to just go and come back again to do that and then hear how much the money would be. It's better, like, we just pay. And then after that, um, we will go back to Free State and save the Lobola money so that he can then go pay once so that we can save on this transportation. You get sharp. So after he paid that 10,000, I remember my baby sisters were given 1,000 rands each. 
1,000 rands each to go and buy clothes. Now, this is from a man that had not bought these kids' clothes in almost five years. And he felt 1,000 rands is enough for them to go buy clothes. And remember, it wasn't only just my sisters. It was my sisters and the small one. You get, Riri. Did Riri get anything? No. Why? Because you know, he says that he doesn't support other people's kids. But even his own kids is not supporting. Because even that 1,000, 1,000 each that he gave them, I personally just feel like you can't tell me that you gave them money from your money because that was my money that you were given. Or am I capping? Or am I wrong? You know? But anyway, I guess in his mind, that makes sense. That was in 2018, guys. I think it was around June. It was June, it did it? July, some of July, ne? yeah, like it was June, July period. Um, then after that, that was it. <laughs> From 2018 up until I took him to court in 2022, he never bought them clothes. No, was Charlie does number for the okay, zero for clothes, sharp. Um, then obviously, when we went back to Free State. That was when um, we said and we had to save money, right? That was when I actually suggested, okay, because my ex was saying that, listen, cut December, I want to go and pay money for Lobola. And then I will pay something and then we'll go back next year to finish. So I'm like, but going to Venice like 5K or more. And the up and down is going to definitely cost a lot. And remember, we are already a family most. This man has been even literally helping support my father's children when my father um, had chosen not to. So I was like, you know what? Um, I had worked with a brand and I literally took all that money and I gave it to him. And I said, baby, go there, um, you know, so that you can basically pay the lobola and then you will just give me back the money when you have it. Then we will have saved on the transport. That is how the part or the portion of me paying my own lobola came to be. Do you understand? And so that's what we did. Um, he did go to Venda. First of all, it was a secret, right, that I was even helping him um, or borrowing him money for the Lobola. Even his family didn't know. Even my family did not know. How did it get to be public? He actually spoke about it in trying to, I don't know if it was trying to humiliate me or whatever. It was in a, he was talking and his aunt was there and whatever. Um, and his uncle, Malumengazi, his sister, and he was like, yeah, even your Lobola money, I'll give you. Hey, what, 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 what? And I'm like, oh, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but anyway, that is what happened. Um, and then we went to Venda, paid the full amount, and then that was that. Right? Sharp. I was asked, did I want any celebration? Please tell me, guys, what celebration I'm going to have when I was being told my mother's side of the family was not going to be accepted there. So I just came here back in July, June, July, after almost five years of not being with any of my father's family, and you expect me to spend so much money so that they can come and rejoice. My mother's side of the family is not welcome. I was like, no, I don't want any celebration. And I was like, whatever celebration that can be done, it may be done that side, you know? I didn't see a reason. What celebration uh, my father's side like to do what? Which money? Whose money? You know, I was like, I don't have money for that. And then after that, okay, that is fine. We left. We went back to Free State. Now, let me tell you guys something. I got married, my lobola was fully paid 2018 December. I think it was the first or the third somewhere there. I can't remember because the divorce is finalized. But my father, not a single day ever stepped foot where the lobola he chowed. That old man does not know where I was married. He does not know. Now, I do understand that we had said that we were going to do the celebration this side, but he never asked, or, okay, guys, are you going to do the celebration? We as a family would like to come because now, remember, this man was had paid a fine, a hefty fine um, to apologize, which means whatever wrong he has done, it has been paid for, right? That's number one. Number two, he has paid the lobola in full. Not even one rent was short, guys. He was given all the money. So what is the reason for him to cannot come and see where I was married? Or actually to come and say, let's have a relationship with the people of your in-laws, the ones that came to marry. Because I had already told him that, well, my husband's family, immediate family, obviously we were not in good terms. But it was his first, like his actual uncle and his actual aunt that went to negotiate the lobola. And 
traditionally that's how it's done. It's never the parents of the husband that go to Bilobola. It's always the uncles and the aunt. And that was done. You understand? So Abanda Badala guys, they, they were there. So things were done proper. But my father never a single day, guys, set foot. I think this part is the part where I really literally got very hurt of the fact that I just felt if my mother was still alive, there is no way that she would have allowed people just sit and nobody go to see where I was married, you know. Um, and then, okay, that was that. I remember 2019, um, my, you know, we would communicate here and there. Things were, I would say, okay-ish. But I was concerned of the fact that my sisters were not being taken to school, really. I asked them, what are you guys doing? They were like, there's a school that my father has gotten them into that they go once a month. Was it once a month? Twice a month? Twice a month. Two times in a month. Why is it taking young kids and putting them in old people's school? Like, why, guys? Please tell me. This is someone that was a principal, so he knows about education. He took his brothers to school. He took his wives to school. Why can't he take his children to school? Like, make it make sense to me. Now, I mean, every single time that you try to talk to my father about the anything that has to do with, like, the embitterment of, of, of his children's lives, he will always, always result into threats and, um, you know, yeah, I don't want this. You can go. Hey, what, 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 like he will always result to that. So I was just, guys, I was exhausted of fighting Batong. I was also tired. But I'm like, okay, let me see. I remember June of 2019, uh, my sisters visited, right? When they visited, I asked them, guys, what do you want to do with your lives? You know, Ray's mom was like, I want to go to um, a school so that I can sew clothes. And um, I think my sister, I can't remember what she had said. Um, Umishuma, right? But Mishuma has always wanted to go to school. But anytime, like, she would apply anywhere and they would take her, there would be one excuse after another. No, you know, here you won't do this. Ah, you can't pass here. Yeah, you can Even though maybe they've accepted her or anything like that. But also with her, having the fear of, yo, they will kick me out again. When he says something, you cannot suggest otherwise. You understand? And me being the firstborn, I would try, maybe like, okay, let me talk to him or whatever. If I try that, I'm being disrespectful. And then again, it's another fight. So this time I was like, okay, I asked Ray's mom, I'm like, okay, if that's what you want, go to your dad. When you get home, go to him and tell him, Tata, this is what I would like to do. Can you please take me to a school where I'll be able to so learn how to sew clothes? I said, okay. She went home and she told her father. I remember, guys, 2018, 2019, my father calls me and he says, hey, your sister says that she wants to go to school to sew clothes. I said, okay. And then he's like, the school is 7,000 rands. I'm like, okay. He's like, I, I would like for us to go half-half so that we can help each other so that a future can be set. Now, mind you guys, first of all, he's wanting half from me to take his child to school. Meanwhile, he has child lobola. So I'm no longer, I no longer belong to him. I now have my own family. When you accept lobola, it means you're giving me to my husband, right? In this case, I feel like me now was sold. Because at least those that pay, Lobola was paid, I would say it's my other sisters. Because at least born away, they were married. Or are married, because they still are. At least my father knows where they are married, guys. Now I was, my own place of marriage was never known. So now personal for no, now I was sold. <laughs> they sold me, because what you sell, you don't care about it. I may laugh, guys, but it hurts. Why is it that everyone who's Lobola has been paid in this family? The family knows where they were married. But, or they are married. But now my own lobola was paid. But nobody never bothered to say, let's know where Owami is also married. The only difference here is because my own mother is in the grave, right? Okay. That's fine. Um, basically, I'm like, I didn't understand it. But again, not wanting fights, not wanting the whole situation of him acting like how he has been all these years, I pay, guys, the 3,500 rands so that she will go to school. The only money that I now refused was when he was calling me saying there's 900 for electricity, I should pay 450 for what? I was like, I, I don't think I have that money now or something. I can't remember. I ended up actually not paying that amount, you know? 
So, yeah, because I remember I paid this money that I paid there. I just can't remember, like, how everything was because it was a while back. But then she did go to that school, and I think they constantly wanted some extra money and whatever and stuff. I don't know what happened, but she ended up actually not graduating. Why are you question there? Oh, so our father did not pay. That's why she didn't continue. Oh, he didn't finish the payment. That's why she stopped. So that's the reason that they're saying she stopped. Because Lina, guys, I was not getting to a point where I was like, I want to just also focus on my own family. I've got a husband now. You know, he has done, he has paid the lobola. Granted, I did borrow him, but nobody knew. It was a family secret between me and him. So I was like, I also need to focus on my own family, you know. That was 2019. 2020, um, you know, remember my lobola was paid December of 2018. 2019, it's a year now, got December. There is no uh, visitation from my family. This is before COVID, right? Um, there's no lobola, I mean, there's no visitation, and there's also no child in the marriage. Um, personally, I feel like usually what they do is that if, let's say, maybe there's no child, they've not had, or oh, our daughter is pregnant or something, I feel like in this to guys, they will try to come to your household, you know, and try to call you aside to find out, hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? Blah, 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 blah. You know, stuff like that. But that never happened with me. I'm like, okay. Um, so, yeah, 2020 comes. Uh, 20, I mean, Feb, March, I think. I can't remember if it was February or March. Or oh, April, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was February or March. That was when I was diagnosed with um, fibroids. And so, you know, uh, things went down in terms of um, COVID happened. I was supposed to go for an operation and um, it was canceled because of lockdown. They were only taking emergency. And then after that, um, I, I obviously communicated back home to say, hey, they said I've got fibroids. I mean, I was very scared. I didn't even know what fibroids was. I remember actually um, even searching and I was relieved to find out that actually they're nine by nine. They call it like that. They're not cancerous, right? Um, so, um, you know, lockdown now happened in 2020. My level was paid 2018. You know, um, okay, um, the fight started happening with my ex cause lockdown. I found out that he was cheating. I remember, I think it was in June, man. I can't remember which month, guys. I, I think it was in April, May or something, or June. I can't remember. I think that was when they started lifting the restrictions a bit. You could travel inter province um, if you have got like a, a letter. I think you would have to get a letter or something. And I remember just being so emotionally drained because I was with this man that was cheating. That was like literally, he had just changed, guys. He was a man that I had never met. Um, it was like living with a stranger in the house. It was a very painful moment for me, you know, because... I feel like I had taken my trust and I had put it on my ex-husband so much. That man has seen me break down in ways that no one in this world has ever. And when you have gone through so much, I'm sorry, when you have gone through so much, um, and this is the one person that has always been a constant in your life, you, you kind of make them your whole world. And I think that's exactly what I had done with him. So... Finding out that he was not being faithful and his um his change, you know, um into being a completely a completely different person, it was heartbreaking. Um it was like now I was at a point where I felt I really had no one. Because, you know, I know my sisters have me, but I was like, at least I have him, you know. Um because obviously we were not lucky enough to be born by a loving father. And unfortunately, we were not lucky enough to have a mother that lived long. So that was very um, disheartening to a point where I almost killed myself. It was really tough. So I remember just feeling that I needed a break. I really needed a break from that place. Um, it was like, it was really tough for me because it was like, I was finding out things like, boom, 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 this girl, that girl, that girl, that girl. Like, I was just like, damn, like, when am I going to catch a break? And then on top of that, he went to every single person that could care to listen with his mom. 
Um, and they were basically just telling everyone that I was the one that was being unfaithful. Um, I told him that he doesn't satisfy me in bed and I got a new boyfriend. And you know, when he was now heartbroken and he started getting a girlfriend, I now kicked him out of the house. So there was a lot that was happening, including like I would go to a shop, guys, because remember, Mina, I was a stranger in that town. They know him from uh, birth. And everyone is like, yo, no, we know him. Like he is, um, what do they call this? Like he is a good person, you know, like he would never do that, which means the story of me coming in and cheating on him and, and, and oppressing him and throwing him out has to be true. So I remember guys going to the shops, they would throw me with change. <laughs> so I, I just needed a break from that area, guys. I really needed a break from that area. I used to dread, literally dread going to just buy bread because that place is so small. Everybody knows everybody's business, you know? Um, so, and when people know wrong information about you, I'm a stranger here. I don't even have friends. I don't go out like that. Like, you know, I literally had like one girl that I would sometimes talk to, um, and that was it. So it was like, who's going to hear my side of the story? How are they even going to? Because his mother, his father, his brother, everybody was just going out there wild. And mind you, like, we had not been talking for years. He had not been talking to his parents for years. That was also being blamed on me. Like, it's my fault. I'm this and that. Uh, that vendor girl has used Muti on him. So it was like a lot, guys. It was a lot for me. So I wanted to go home. And I remember calling my father. And I was like, hey, dad, please. Um, um, actually, not even please. I was like, you know what? I want to just come home so, um, to refresh my mind. Now, at this point, he knew that I was having problems in my marriage. Um, and as I'm saying, it was a time where you could enter provincial travel if you got a, a, a reason, right? But he didn't. He, he didn't care to do that, you know? Um, but then I remember him actually telling me to say, uh, yeah, you can come back as long as it's your husband that tells me that you're coming, you know? And I'm like, when it comes to my money, you... I didn't tell him this, but that's what came to my mind. When he wanted me to pay for my sister's money, he never consulted my husband. It was money for me that I should give him. But now for me to come home so that I can rest my mind, you now need permission from my husband. Okay. I tell him and I'm like, listen, I want to go to Venda, which he was very excited. And my ex-husband had already planned with his side chick, Uri, when I leave to Venda, she's going to move in and they're going to be playing happy family in my house, which is what I found out later, obviously. And I remember, um, you know, my, um, um, my ex-husband calling my father and he was like, hello, yeah, no, how are you? They're talking, right? Um, and I was in the car listening to the conversation and he's like, no, I'm giving her permission to can come home. Those were the words he said. My ex-husband, I'm giving her permission to can come home. She can come. And my father was like, yeah, I didn't want her to just come. <laughs> <laughs> I love guys, but it's not funny. I'm tired of crying. I felt like I was a potato being negotiated over. Like, for me to go to my father's house, someone needs to give permission. Someone that is abusing me. And I've told you as my father. Mm. Guys, after that conversation, then my father was like, ah, no, then it's fine. She can come home. I just remember saying, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to sit here. You know, and I didn't go, man. I was so disgusted because I was like, and honestly, like at that point, you know, when things happen, you are obviously like emotionally drained. You need to get your strength. I think like at that time when the conversation was happening, I just knew that when I leave this marriage, my home is not an option for me. I knew that because I was like, mm. I mean, this old man has never shown love especially even when we needed him the most when our mother passed and then I'm going to leave here and then I'm going to go home to him. I know. And mind you guys at that time, he was under the impression that my ex-husband was the one bringing in the mula. He did not know that they saying him shy at times three payment wise. I was not with that nigga for anything but love. Okay. 
when that happened, um, you know, I was like, I'm not going to go anywhere. I started planning, guys. That was when I started my planning. I, I, I then, um, you know, moved. And obviously, I mean, I got my operation uh, December 9th, 2020. But before then, the Malume that went to pay for my Lobola, guys, he passed away. When he passed away, I called my father. That time, the, 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 the lockdown had been lifted. I called to say, hey, you know, Malume that came to pay Lobola has passed away. My father did not come for that funeral, guys. And I remember well. You remember the, my uncle's daughter that used the SIM card? Her in-laws, I can't remember if it was the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, had a party that same weekend. My father chose to go to that party and not attend the funeral of my uncle, the uncle that paid Lobola for me. Nobody from that Nature Bajau family came. It was just me there alone. <laughs> okay. Malume and Malume guys, they passed back to back. You know, they passed back to back. And, um, um, like, Malume was buried this week. And then Malumekazi passed the following week. So the hair funeral was now the other week. So it was just a week apart. Um, and when she passed, I called him and I was like, yo, <clears throat> Malumekazi, the one that came to pay Lobola has now passed away, you know. And no, he did not come. He didn't. And I remember like, I think when it was like Wednesday or Thursday, I was like, no, you don't have to come. Because guys, I was... I, I was tired of being disappointed. I was tired of being disappointed. If they really wanted to come, when I told them that, okay, Malumekase has now passed and they know Malume passed and they never came, I think they would have already been like, okay, we're going to get there. Maybe we'll arrive on Friday or something. Guys, nothing. And to tell you that that family actually spoke about it um, is because on Friday when we were burying Malumekase on Saturday, one of Malumekase's sisters that we were sitting in the room. She asked Rowena, why is it that your family has never come here? Guys, I was so embarrassed. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? I just said, ah, uh, you know, I can't even remember what I said. But guys, I didn't have an answer. I think I just said, ah, you know how life is when you don't have a mother. I think that's what I just said. Because guys, what am I going to say? What answer am I going to give them? Now, obviously after that, on the 9th of uh, December, I got my operation, which God bless, everything went well. The fibroids were removed. When I came back from the hospital, because I was discharged on a, I think it was on a Saturday. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I was supposed to go for my first checkup. On Wednesday, my ex just left in the morning and he never came back. So he had gone to his mother's house, which I didn't care anymore because I had already asked him for a divorce. So I was like, okay, that's fine. But I wish he had obviously communicated to say I'm going to leave and not come back. First of all, I've got a fresh operation. I can't do anything for myself, guys, at that time. And literally, like, he left even with the remote of the gate. Like... I'm like, bruh, you could have left the remote so that if I want to go out, I can go out. Um, at this point, he's acting like he's hiding at his mother's house. Guys, that, that lion, eh? he knows how to play victim. And remember, he has painted the whole town, my name, as such a bad person. I'm at a point where, guys, after you have that operation, you can't even scream. So I remember um, the Thursday morning. Because that Wednesday, I, 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 I slept waking up because I was thinking, is he okay? Because he had never done that. So I was calling the police because I'm like, this man has been saying all these things about me. If anything has happened to him, then everyone is going to look at me, you know? So I was like, I even told the police, please go to his father's house and find out if he's not there. Because I think he might be there, you understand? At least there will be proof that um, I tried you know, which they went and they said they said he's not here, which they were lying because the car was there. You know, okay, Shabu. My baby sister now Thursday, when she finds out that I slept alone, this child, my youngest sister, guys, she starts crying and she's like, I'm going. She cannot drive because my father does not believe in teaching his daughters how to drive. And because my mother only had daughters, obviously she was disadvantaged or we were disadvantaged because 
who's gonna teach us how to drive because we are girls, honey, okay? So she's coming, I have a car, I can't drive because of the operation, I now have to hire a driver. Now, she's leaving Venda, guys, she does not even, do you know how far it is to get to Free State? So I remember I had to now ask one of my cousins um, who stays in Midrand to say that, please just, you know, um, like how say that night and then in the morning of Friday, I mean, I had to call um, the surgery so that I can postpone my first checkup, which is very important because they have to know that you're healing properly, you know. Uh, my father, even after knowing all this is happening, did my father ever say, I'm going to take a car and go with the sister so that we can go and check up on one who just had a serious surgery? Guys, the removal of fibroids is actually more deeper than birthing operation. There are people that have died on the table. That old man did not care. My sister had to catch a taxi, she slept in Midra, and I had to hire a driver from Free State to come here for my first checkup, which, thank God, he was even shocked because my aunt gave me one tip to say, don't walk bending down, walk standing up. So everything was healing very fine. I was off the Medicaid pain meds, I think, in a, like three days or something. Like, my pain tolerance is very high because the fibroids used to be, like, way more painful. And so that was how I actually went back to Free State with my sister, and I had to be hiring a driver for me to be coming back and forth to Midrand, looking for a place which I did look online, and that was how I was now moving um, to Midrand, which was in 2020, towards end of December. So remember, the operation was on the 9th. So Kabodi 27, I was up and down, guys. Up and down, Bokoto one style. Because <laughs> I had told myself, when I leave here, I'm not going to my father's house. The same one that wanted negotiations from my abuser for me to come home. I was like, I'm not going there. So I, I, that's when I was now making plans to come to Midrand. Now, obviously, part four is going to be coming tomorrow. This is how we're going to now go into start of how my father and I stopped talking and how we started the court proceedings because my father and I stopped talking in 2021, and this time it was me who cut him off because I was tired. I was hurtful, guys. I was tired. So tomorrow, that's when we're going to get to that. And finally, the part that I want us to talk about um, that has been the nightmare that is this maintenance court case because, as I'm saying, I'm here. Anyway, ninjas, I do hope that you guys are learning something from this and maybe getting to know more about, like, some of the stuff that you guys have heard and also timeline. And then, yeah, tomorrow we're going to continue. And I think part five, obviously, might be the last part. I don't know if we will have six parts, but up until wherever, I will tell you guys everything. That's where I'm actually going to stop. And then after that, I will be vlogging the process of this court case because saying Katele, guys, I cannot be depressed like this over an old man that knows that he has got kids. Guys, I'm tired. Anyway, I love you ninjas. Stay blessed and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.